Uh, what's your name? Demir. Demir? Ah, uh, I'm Jediah. Jediah. So, Demir, it says if you love Jesus, you got to keep his commandments. Amen. Now, give me the commandment on uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Now, you might not have known this before, but there's actually a commandment on smoking. You ever heard that? No, sir. No, sir. That's why we come out here, to actually bring the, the knowledge to our people, because we need to know this. We can't keep on walking around saying, I know Jesus. Right. All praises. Let's actually get the law. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So, Demir, you are the temple of God. Read. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh -huh. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So it says, any man defile his temple of God. What are some ways that um, black people defile their temple? Putting bad stuff in it. Bad stuff in it, eating the wrong foods, food, eating, stuff. smoking, mm -hmm. um, laying down from a woman to woman to woman. Right. Right. All these other things, that's defiling your temple. Right. And God will destroy you. All praises, you put that out. Right. But that's part of repentance. Give me Acts 3.19. That's the reason Jesus Christ came on the earth, to spread repentance, to actually teach our people the proper way of what we need to do in order to seek the kingdom of heaven. The whole reason why God put us on this earth in the first place. Read that. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So, Demir, do you know what it means to repent? What does it mean? Ask for forgiveness of your sins, right? So, what sin? I mean, all things that are bad, you know, against uh, God. You know, all things that He said were bad. So oh, that's close, that's close. Give me what sin is according to the Bible. Uh huh, read it. This is the book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgresses also the law. So it says, whosoever committed sin transgresses the law, meaning breaks some of God's laws. Because you know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's teaching the, the, um, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans God's commandments. So if you ever commit sin, then you uh, transgress God's laws. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is when you break one of God's commandments. Right. Now go back to Acts 3.19. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So it says to repent. Ask for forgiveness of that sin. Repentance, that doesn't mean we uh, walk away from hearing this Bible and then go back to start smoking. It actually means change and continue it on. You got what I'm saying? Read. That your, sin, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. What your sins being blotted out. Meaning if we stop, we actually come into the true knowledge of the Bible and we put away all the sins that, that we um, live day to day by. We keep the Sabbath holy. We stop smoking. We actually marry our sister who we're sleeping down with. Then the most High God, he will forgive us for our sins. Now, um, go to go to Matthew 19 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? All right, bro. So what we're going over right now is I got to teach you how to get to the kingdom of heaven. Read. Um, yeah, read that again. And behold, one came and said unto him. So a man came unto Jesus Christ and asked him, a question, how do I get to the kingdom of heaven? Read. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So Christ said, why are you calling me good? Read. Why callest thou me good? For, for there is one good, there is none good but one, that is God. 
But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. But if you want eternal life, if you want to get to the kingdom of heaven, we got to start applying God's commandments. Right. Now we're about to go over some commandments for you. Numbers 15. The book of Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. You see what all the brothers got on their t-shirts? You know what this is called? It's called fringes. And that's the commandment in the Bible that we got to put fringes on the borders of our garments. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. It says, bid them, command them that they make fringes in the borders of the garments. So when we actually hear the word come out, we apply it. We do it. We go to the nearest store that you can find and we put some fringes because we got to start fearing God. That's what we need in our communities. Have the fear of the Most High God. Read it. Throughout their generations. It says throughout your generations, meaning ongoing. When you have children, you, you got a son? You don't got a son, but if you have a child, you got to teach them the commandments. We got to put fringes on the borders of our garments because it's a commandment. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And that's why you see we have a ribbon of blue because it's a commandment. When we hear the word come out, when God says do something, it's about time that we start doing it. We can't keep on going day to day, not um, applying God's commandments because guess what? What happens in our communities, we got the single parent households, we get, um... Hey brother, you said you've been, you've been watching, so you know you're Israel, right? How old are you, brother? 22. 22, okay. Hey, a lot of us are young. We 20s, 30s, so on and so on. Hey, what's holding you back? So you know it already. So brother, um, give me Surah 37 12. So you need some support, right? What you're looking at, we the man that's gonna support you because we understand that you are you you my people. So you know we got a school here, right? Yeah, it's right down the street, three minutes down the street. It's 4727 Carpenter Road. You have a flyer? Yeah, turn it on the back. On the bottom, it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Yeah. So it's right down the street. We meet every Sabbath at three o'clock. Now the question is, do you believe? You believe in these scriptures? All right, watch this. Read that. But be continually with a God. Man. The Bible says, be continually with the godly man. So that's the commandment. So, right now, when you leave here, who do you hang amongst? Uh, my brothers. Like, uh, they, they friends, but like, they so close to me that I call them brothers. And anybody outside of that, I don't, I don't really, you know what I'm saying, associate okay. with. Okay, watch this. Hold that. Give me the book of um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 48. So you said your brothers. So what we do... We go through the scriptures. Whatever you say, keyword sticks out to me. So I'm gonna go find the scripture to show you who your brother is. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. Watch this, read this. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 48. And what you understand, what's your name again? Amir. I said Amir? Amir. Demir. Yeah. All right, I'm out of thighs. Now what you understand, sometimes the scriptures mean two different things. Hold that, I'm gonna show them. Give me Job 11 and six. Job 11 and six real quick. The officer was teaching you correctly. There's just a few points that I wanted to stick out and have a come back up. All right, so when we read the scripture, sometimes you'll read brother, it'll mean one thing, you understand? And then another instance, it'll mean something else. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 11 and verse six, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. So the most high God, if you keep his commandments, he will show you the secrets of wisdom. Where do we get this wisdom from? From the Bible, read. That they are double. That they are what? That that they are double. That they are double meaning what? They have two different meanings. You with me? Now watch this first meaning. Matthew 12 and 48. Matthew chapter 12 verse 48. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 48. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? So this is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. He says, Who is my mother? Meaning what? Who is my family? That's what he's saying. Who is my mother? Read. Who is my mother? Read. And who is my brethren? And who is his what? Who is my brethren? 
All right. So Christ is asking the question. All right. He did he not have a physical mother? Yes, he did. Did he not have brothers? Yes, he did. All right. Read on. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. To who? Toward his disciples. Now, are you familiar with the Bible at all? All right. So were the disciples Christ's actual blood brothers? Were those were those the brothers that he grew up with? <clears throat> he met them right in his life. Read it again. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples Read. and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. His mother and his what? Behold, my mother and my brethren. So when you made the statement saying they like your brothers, well, go back to Sirach 37 and 12. You really got to uh, process what you're saying. You got to think about what you're saying. You said, Demir, Demir, watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. Come on. But he, but be continually with a godly man. That's a commandment. So my question to you is, these friends that you call your brethren or your brothers, are they godly men? You say yes. How, how do you tell they're godly or not? God fearing. God fearing. What does it mean to fear God? That's a good question. I know, I know. That's why I'm being real with you, because a lot of our people, uh, we come out of Christianity, or we come out of our own doctrines, thinking that we know better. But we really don't know what the Bible says, you understand? So we're going to show you according to the Bible, not my words, not Demir's words, we're going to show you according to the Bible what it means to fear God. Give me that, Psalms 119, 120. And the beautiful thing, Demir, is you said you needed help, right? You said you needed a support system. The Bible is your support system, but you got to have men to teach you and guide you. You understand? So, for example, when I first came in, I didn't know it all. I still don't know it all. I'm still learning. But guess what? This, you got to have a base. You got to have a support. You got to start somewhere. Now, watch what it means to fear God. Read this. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. For what? For fear of thee. For what? For fear of thee. So, you see, the topic is what? Fear. It says, his flesh trembling for fear of thee. Talking about he's scared of the Most High. Read. And I am afraid of thy judgment. Of thy what? Of thy judgment. What does it mean to receive judgment? Say if you did something wrong, what does it mean to receive a judgment for that? Or what's another word? Think about, um, say, say you stole, right? And you got arrested. And then you, you had a court, you got a court appearance, right? You're standing before the judge. When the judge gives you your sentence, that's another word for judgment. What does that mean? You know, you know, think about it. Say, for example, say a man, he was uh, brought in for armed robbery, right? So he had to wait in jail until this court case came. So his court case came 10 days later, so he's standing before the judge, right? So the judge says, all right, you are guilty of armed robbery because you committed this crime. I'm going to sentence you to two years in prison. You got two years in prison because you committed a crime, right? So what, watch this. Read this again. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. Come on. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, uh -huh. and I am afraid of thy judgment. Of thy judgments, meaning what? A lot of our people, they're scared to steal. They're scared to do anything to get arrested because of what's going to happen to them prison time, community service, whatever it may be. Same thing with God's laws. If you break God's laws, guess what? There's a sentence waiting on you. You understand that? All right, read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. So now let's go back to um, Sirach 37 and 12. Let's go back here. Read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. So now, Demir, we just learned what it means to fear God, right? What does it mean to fear God? Um, you need us to read it again? I'm trying to like word it. Okay, okay. 
singing songs with 11 to like breaking his commandments. To be afraid of breaking his commandments. That's 100% correct, bro. And that, yeah, that said it perfectly. So my question is, drop that, go back to Sirach. So my question is, do your friends apply this scripture right here? Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. So, are your friends godly men? I mean, what is godly? Someone they believe. I know they believe in God. Okay, so you said, what is godly? And then you said they believe in God. So we're going to read down to show you what godly means. And then we're going to go give you the precept and the definition in the scriptures to show what believe means. Watch this. But be continually with a godly man. So as he reads down, it's going to tell you what it means to be godly. Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom thou what? Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. That's a godly man. Is that your right? Hey, hey, Elijah, go and lock this brother in. Hey, hey, come to the school this Saturday, all right? Three o'clock. And keep in contact with this brother right here, all right? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.